and the dispute continues. Both countries have gone to war twice over the territory, and this week they put their armies on alert yet again. India's Prime Minister, V.P. Singh, in a speech patently not designed to, to cool passions, called on his countrymen to prepare for war. It followed the kidnappings and killings of three Indians by Kashmiri Muslim militants. Caroline Lefman now reports. The death of the hostages taken by Kashmiri separatists this week shocked the Indian government. Their bodies had been dumped unceremoniously on the streets of Srinagar, one of them even before the deadline set by the kidnappers for the release of three detained colleagues. The Kashmiri capital has been a city under curfew almost continuously for three months, the result of the latest challenge to the unity of the Indian state. During the curfews, Indian security forces hunt for insurgents and weapons, and it's alleged by the Kashmir Press Agency, their searches include assaults on unarmed and innocent citizens. Between curfews, demonstrators have flooded the streets, angered by the imposition of direct rule from New Delhi last January, effectively ending the state's special status, and by the sacking of the local governor. Many Kashmiris feel they've been betrayed by the Indian government. India and Pakistan have fought for decades over Kashmir, but many ordinary Kashmiris want neither of them. The largest separatist group is the Jammu Kashmir Liberation Front, which wants independence and is demanding a UN-supervised referendum to determine the state's future. A third of Kashmir is controlled by Pakistan, accused by New Delhi of supporting the militants, a charge denied by Islamabad. Furthermore, it's feared any concessions there could increase demands for secession in other Indian states like the Punjab. Since the crackdown three months ago, uncertainty and the curfews have ruined many businesses. There are claims of discrimination against Muslims and suggestions that only Hindus are given work in the vital communications industry. However, the issue is not exclusively religious, but one of Kashmiri nationalism, and calls for separatism are not what New Delhi wants to hear. An inevitable war again over Kashmir. The doom watchers have spoken. But must it be conflict, or will they make do with rhetoric? Sheena. Well, let's see if we can find out. With me now is Shabir Chowdhury, General Secretary of the Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Front, the JKLF. Let's first of all look at those, uh, the killings of the hostages. Now, it was the youth wing of your movement that claimed responsibility for killing the hostages. How can those killings be in the interests of those in favour of Kashmiri independence? Well, one has to see at the basic cause of uh, this conflict, and that is the Kashmiri's right of self-determination. And when people uh, are, they are killed, innocent people are killed, their houses are raided by paramilitary forces, their women are raped, this is everyday occurrence. None of that justifies, surely, the killing of three innocent hostages, an act which it seems has brought two ancient warrior nations again within, within sight of war. Yes, well, uh, it, real, the real issue is, uh, is the VP Singh is trying to distract the real issue, and that is the right of self-determination. How does this help your cause? You mean the war? War is not going to help anyone. It's not going to help India. It's not going to help Pakistan. And we believe that it, this is the last thing we want. Uh, it, the war is going to create problems for us. And uh, we, we don't want, uh, we want India and Pakistan to live like uh, good neighbors. And instead of spending huge amounts of money on arms, I want them to uh, spend that money on their social and welfare. See, even when it seems completely unlikely if India agreed to Kashmiri independence, surely Kashmir would then simply become annexed to Pakistan? No, no, that is not the case. The majority of Kashmiris want an independent Kashmir. I mean, when pa India will agree to uh, give a right of self-determination, it will be simultaneously given by Pakistan as well. The referendum, proposed referendum, is going to take place in a whole Kashmir, not Indian part of Kashmir. Let me bring in Dilip Hero. How do you see this situation at the moment? Well, I think the situation is getting quite uh, tense, and I think it's, uh, <clears throat> one can look at some situation in purely moral terms and what is social justice, and one can also look at the same situation in practical terms. As far as India is concerned, this is a very bad time for them, because we have to remember things are going on in the Punjab. Now, let us say a referendum takes place in Jammu and Kashmir, and let us say that they decide to break away from India, whether they become independent or go to Pakistan, and the story. If that were to happen, it will have a chain reaction in India, two ways. One, of course, Sikhs will say, well, why not us? Okay. Secondly, we have to remember 
there are 100 million Muslims living in India and there will be a reaction from the Hindu fundamentalists. 85% of India is Hindu and if Kashmir breaks away for by whatever means, then there will be a reaction and that will put the life of 100 million Muslims in jeopardy. Can I? Well, I think the word you have used, breakaway, is wrong because in Kashmir has never been part of India, so there's no point of breaking away. I mean, that accession was a provisional, and that was with, and it was decided that uh, it would be the Kashmiri people who would be the final decider. And that right of self-determination has never been given to Kashmiris. Okay. So there's no point of breaking away I from think, India. I think you know, one, one can quibble about words. We are not uh, lawyers. I'm just trying to make a simple point. Let's break away from, let's not get bogged down whether there'll be a referendum. Let's say there's a referendum. Let's take for yes. granted. And if the referendum, as we mostly know, most probably, they will not stay with India. Okay, now let's say that takes place. Then if that separation comes, so whatever term you want to use, it will have a massive reaction because we have to remember for better or for worse, India is a Hindu country. 85% of the people are Hindu. So this and is what so we're that, saying, that the people no, no, is a Hindu this, country. This, no, so what about the other country? No, like, no, 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 listen, I, I'm not, see, we have also... Kashmir has never you know, been we, part we, of we India. We also have to understand another point, see, which is, What's happening in India is in a way symptomatic of what's happening uh, generally in the world. Two things are happening in the world. The forces of secularism and socialism are on the retreat. Good or bad is in the story. Okay, in that particular context, things are happening in India. But if you are Indian politician in charge of India at present, you've got 25 states in India. If one like us, we well, goes I mean, away, why, then why you bring India again yeah. and again? No, no, we're, I'm, not, I'm, we're not concerned about other states of India. All we are saying is that Kashmir has never been part of India, and it should never be part of uh, India. And let, me bring it, let me bring in Kamal Khoury at this. I've introduced this as a religious conflict. Is it, do you think? I doubt, well, it has religious overtones, but it's not, uh, I think uh, the Kashmiris basically are Montagnard people and, uh, coming from Lebanon. I do un understand the Montagnard mentality. So it is very much a, a Montagnard situation. Uh, it's the mountain people, you know, yes, they yes, mountain yes. people invariably in the world somehow feel that uh, they have a, a special aura, a special character. Well, coming yeah. from Lebanon, what would you say to Mr. Chowdhury? I mean, Dilip here suggests this is not the time to be engaging in this kind of independence because India is not in a position to, to give way. Well, I would say that certainly the gun will not solve it. I would certainly say after 15 years of attempting to use the gun to solve problems, that's not the way. The way to do it I is through India. dialogue, even though it may take a I longer mean, time. Uh, I mean, India will never be in a position because India has got something to hide. I mean, even I at the time, even at the time when Pandit Nehru was alive, he has been promising. He made Solomon promises to the world, and he said, "I will fulfil those." I mean, it has Mr. never Curry been. says the gun is not the solution. Well, we Can you control I mean, your your youth movement who are taking hostages and now well, killing them? Well, what what do you expect them to do? If uh, paratroopers come to their home, they rape their wives, they rape their sisters, take their daughters to police stations. And we have incidences where a, a political activist is wanted by police, and his father is taken to the police station and tortured to death. In other words, you cannot control them. Where will it end? Well, I mean, we we want just want uh, uh, India to give us the right of self determination. Control our rhetoric, yeah, okay, I, conflict our rhetoric, I, I should I say. I think you see, actually, uh, it's, it's really right. we want no, international, it's, it's, international it's, agencies no, like United no, Nations no, to come no, in. Okay, briefly, Dilip Hira. No, absolutely, of course. See, the, the point is simply that both the governments in power in India and Pakistan they are very insecure. And uh, whether Kashmir like, like it or not, do you see it no, no, uh, like aggravating it not, to war? Yes, precisely. That's what I'm saying. Whether Kashmir like it or not, if this thing goes on, the two countries will go to war. All I can say is that I only hope it will be a short war. Because they want to maintain the status quo. It, it they both countries uh, want to divide no, the Kashmir uh, and they want point? to maintain the status quo. No, fair, Gentlemen, we must move on to a country which has been at war for 15 years. Yesterday was the 15th anniversary, if that's the word, of the civil war between the Christian and Muslim communities in the